Hey everybody, how's it going? Today we're going to be going over and showing you how to install the Kurt Trailer Hitch Receiver here on a 2022 Cadillac XT4. So adding a trailer hitch to your XT4, it's going to be an excellent option because it's going to make your vehicle that much more versatile. Now we can obviously use the trailer hitch for towing, but let's say we wanted to hit the trails or just simply free up some space for us and the family inside the vehicle on those long road trips. We could easily attach either a hitch mounted bike rack or hitch mounted cargo carrier. So this is what our trailer hitch is going to look like installed on our vehicle here when we're getting ready to use it. Now the great thing about this is it has a completely hidden design because when we're not using it, we can actually reinstall our center knockout panel here for a 100% factory appearance. So in regards to towing, our trailer hitch here is going to provide us with a 4,000 pound gross trailer weight rating. That's the amount we can pull outward and also has a 400 pound tow weight rating, which is a downward force on the receiver. Now keep in mind, these capacities are for the hitch only, which is actually tested separately of the vehicle. Therefore, you do need to verify your vehicle's towing capacity in your owner's manual and abide by the lower of the two rated components, whether that is the hitch or the vehicle. So in regards to those hitch mounted accessories, you'll be happy to know that because we have the larger of the two standard sizes, this one is two inch by two inch, we're gonna have plenty of to choose from. So with this larger two inch opening, there's certainly a lot more bike racks, cargo carriers, and ball mounts that we can select when compared to the smaller one and a quarter inch. So on the side of a receiver tube, we're gonna have our hitch pin hole, which is gonna be an industry standard 5 8 inch diameter. Now keep in mind, your hitch pin and clip don't actually come with a trailer hitch. And the reason for that is a lot of your accessories such as bike racks and cargo carriers actually come with their own. But if you do need one, we have plenty of options. And then welded to the bottom of the receiver tube, we have our safety chain loops, and those work great with those S-style hooks. So a couple measurements for you guys here that are gonna help you when you're selecting your hitch mounted accessories. The first one is the distance from the ground to the top inside edge of the receiver tube opening. You're looking at about 17 and a half inches. And that'll be useful when you're selecting a ball mount. That way you can make sure you get the correct rise and drop to tow your trailer level. And then we have the distance from the center of the hitch pin hole to the outside edge of the bumper. And for that, you're looking at about, let's call that four inches. And that'll be useful when you're selecting your folding accessories. That way you can make sure that while they're in the stowed position, they don't hit the vehicle. So in regards to installation, this one is pretty straightforward. And thankfully there's actually no modifying to the vehicle whatsoever. Now you can probably get this done with common hand tools. There is one tool you're gonna to need you might not have, and that's gonna be a torque wrench, but you can actually rent this for free from most local auto parts stores. Now we do have to take off a section of our rear bumper, but it's really not nearly as bad as it sounds. So we'll walk you through the entire process step by step now. So the first step of our installation, we need to come inside to the rear of the vehicle, inside the wheel well here. Now we can start on either side, it doesn't matter, but we do have to do this on both sides. So we're gonna grab a T15 Torx bit, and you're not gonna be able to use like a long handled screwdriver here due to the clearance between the wheels. So if you have some sort of right angle tool or if you just have a small ratchet with a bit holder on there, but we're gonna use that T15 Torx bit to remove the lowermost screws. So there's the bottom one, and here's the top one. Now there is another one up here, but we won't be removing that one, just the lower two most ones. Next, we'll be removing our center knockout panel. So that's this panel here. Now in order to remove that, we're gonna have two little twist fasteners on the bottom here, one on either side. Just simply rotate those, pull down, and then we're just gonna pull the panel actually down and out. Now underneath that panel there on either side, we're gonna have a couple more torque screws we need to remove using that same T15 bit. So next we're gonna peel back this wheel well liner here on either side and there's actually one screw attaching the upper part of the rear bumper fascia to the lower part. So we're gonna get a seven millimeter socket and we're gonna remove that screw right there. So that's what that screw looks like there. And we have one on each side we need to remove. So once we have those screws out, if we looked back in here a little bit more, so connecting the two panels here, we have this little white clip in here. You're gonna have to kind of feel for it there. So what's gonna happen is, is we're gonna remove this white clip by depressing the two sides on the bottom and then pushing straight up. So you really can't see much when you're doing this. You're just kind of gotta be doing it by feel. And you can also use a set of needle nose as well to sort of depress those tabs. 
So that's what that little white clip looks like that we were talking about there. And there's actually just a center tab there. I thought there was one on the side, but it looks like it's just the center. So let's go ahead and depress that and it should pull right out. And then once we do that, we can begin unclipping the fascia here, starting on one side and then working your way over to the other. So there is a little tab here just directly beside this little clearance light. So what I did is I just took a trim panel tool and I just depressed there. You can see there's a lip on top of this that's catching on the back of the top part of the bumper. So I just bent that down and then pulled out. So it looks like there's some more tabs here. Same thing as last time. There we go. Looks like I got one more tucked back in here. And now all that's holding it on is our wiring harness. So in order to separate this lower part of the fascia from the wiring harness, we're just gonna take a trim panel tool. And you can see there's several points here where it's just clipped into those little plastic holders. So we're just gonna pry those away as best as we can. So as I was pulling out those clips, the two sections of this bumper actually separated a little bit. You can see here sort of the outer shell separated from this inner part. So looking at the instructions, I don't think this is how they remove theirs, but you may run into this issue too. So we're just going to go ahead and remove this uh, outer section here, and then we'll remove this here and reattach it to our bumper here. So you may or may not run into this issue. We did, so we're going to take some steps so we can remedy it. So when you get over here to the driver's side, now the instructions don't make any mention of this at all, at least the copy that we had. So I'm not sure what's going on here. I think our vehicle may be equipped with some extra sensors they weren't aware of. So in order to actually get this off here to separate our wiring harnesses, we just undid some more of those clips there like we've been removing. But I actually had to remove these two plugs from the two modules here that are just tucked way back on this lower bumper valence here. So there's gonna be some red security tabs you're gonna pull out, then you're just gonna depress those two clips there. We did the one with the brown connector from the center there, and then we did this one here, and then you'll just have a couple more of those little wire clips, and then we can actually entirely remove the lower section. So just a quick little note here, in order to get to the plugs that we need to remove so we can remove this lower part of the bumper fascia, there is a little cover panel covering those up. There's gonna be a clip here that holds it like so, and then we're gonna have one torque screw we need to remove down here with a T15, and then you can remove this cover panel there and access those connections. And since our outer bumper fascia came off without this, we need to go ahead and remove this now. You may or may not need to do that depending on if you're stayed together or not. So next we're gonna be removing our bumper beam. So our exhaust is actually attached to the bottom bolt of our bumper beam. So we need to go ahead and support the exhaust now. That way when we remove the bumper beam, our exhaust doesn't fall down and create any damage. So we're just gonna find two points on the bottom of the frame here. Just to hook these two, I'm gonna use the coil springs. If you guys are working on the ground, you could probably just use a jack stand under the uh, tailpipe section there. Or you could just use a cam buckle strap here and just pull it tight like so. Now we'll take a 15 millimeter socket and we'll begin removing the nuts which are securing the bumper beam to the vehicle. And then once we get that last bolt off, you're going to pull out this bracket here to let our exhaust come down. So now that we've got this side out, we're just going to repeat those same few steps on the other side and then we should be able to pull the bumper beam off. So now that we have our bumper beam off, we'll go ahead and take our trailer hitch and just simply set it into position. Next, we'll take our bumper beam and reinstall it over the hitch onto the vehicle. So now to hold everything into position, I'm gonna take one of our nuts and I'm gonna secure it into one of the top studs on either side. Next, we'll take the exhaust and raise the bracket back up into position. And then we can secure it with our factory bolts. So now we'll go ahead and snug everything up once we have it in position.
Now we'll come back with our torque wrench here and torque everything down to the specifications listed in your instructions. So now that we have everything torqued down, all we have to do now is just simply reinstall that lower part of the bumper fascia in the reverse order that we removed it. So now with everything buttoned up, that's gonna do it today for our look and installation of the Kurt trailer hitch receiver here on our 2022 Cadillac X-T4.